Hi, welcome to my channel. I love flashcard programs. There is always something I need to memorize, but I hate using physical index cards. I'm always running out of them or losing them. So I bought an app. Yes, of course, there's an app for that. But lately the program I use and love has been removed from the app store. So I thought I would solve two problems at once and make a series of tutorials using Python on how to create an easy to use flashcard program. My goal for the program is to be able to create a text file and from the text file alone create a quiz. Today, we're going to create a dialog box. This is going to be a graphical program. The program will read the indicated directory structure and pull the applicable file names. When the user chooses a quiz, the appropriate file path is given as output. When the main program, the program that we'll call this program, receives the file path, it will be used to load the appropriate data and generate a quiz. I've put all this code up on my GitHub under an MIT license, so please feel free to use it as is or to use it as a jumping off point for your own version of a flashcard program. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So let's begin. First, we instantiate the class and create an object variable, my dialog. Next, we use our newly created variable to call the controlling function, main. A lot of this is self-explanatory. We set the width and height of the window. You can change these values if you like. Then, because we are using Pygame as our graphical engine, we must initialize it. By the way, I've put a link to Pygame below in the description. We set the clock, the font, and create our drawing surface. Then we initialize variables we will be using within the class. It's all pretty straightforward. Let's look at two of the functions that are called when this class is created. This is straightforward. We use Pygame to create two rectangles. One, window background rect, is used to display what the user's options are. The second is used to help display the user's input. Note that these rectangles aren't functional. We are using them as background art for the text that will be displayed. Here on the screen is the handy function that does this. This displays the directories in data quizzes. Get directories is the function that does most of the work here. Here we get all the file names in the chosen directory. We make sure that the file name really is a file name and not something like DS store and format the file name for display. You'll likely want to do more than I do here, but this gives you an idea. We collect these in a list and then return the list. After we've gathered all the menu items, we format them and add them to self window text list. Okay, so much for initialize rectangles and assemble menu. Now we have our object variable, our connection to the class main dialog. Now let's look at main dialog's main function. As you can see, this is straightforward. The while loop keeps executing while the control variable keep looping is set to true. By the way, if I put clock tick and then I use 20 in the main definition, it's because that's what I'm used to, but you could just as easily put it in the init function. Anyway, in the while loop, the first function we call is self events. So let's take a look. Don't worry if you don't have a firm grasp of Pygame. We are not going to do anything fancy. First, we ask Pygame to tell us about the events that are related to the drawing surface we just created. If the user closes the drawing surface, the window, using a mouse, then Pygame quit will be generated. When, if that happens, we set self keep looping to false. This will stop the while loop in main from executing. Otherwise, we ask, has the user pressed a key? And then we look at what kind of key they've pressed. For instance, if it was the escape key, then we treat it the same as quit and set keep looping to false. On the other hand, if the user presses the backspace key, then we will remove the last character from the text currently being displayed in the user's text box. On the other hand, if the user hits return, then first we give the contents of text to user text and then set text to the empty string. Say that six times fast. The next bit of code helps keep track of which menu has been selected. The variable menu active stores the name of the menu that will be accessed when return is pressed. So now let's take a look at process directory input. As I've just mentioned, when return is pressed, the contents of text are transferred to user text. Now we make sure that whatever is in user text is numeric. Otherwise, we exit the function without raising an error. If user text is numeric, then we convert it to an integer and check to make sure that it is a possible index. If it isn't, then we exit out of the function. 
Here we make sure that the file path is the path of a quiz and nothing else. You can make your directory look a bit different than mine. Just remember to exclude any files you want excluded right here. Now all we have to do is format the files the way we like. Okay, now let's take a look at process subdirectory input. There is a directory and a subdirectory. So for instance, I have three directories, one per kind of quiz. For myself, I have one directory for the major tarot, the minor tarot, and the zodiac. I've always wanted to dress up and be a fortune teller at a party, so this is my homework. And then for a subdirectory, I will have different quizzes. So for the minor tarot, I might have uh, what is the meaning of a face card, what is the meaning of a numbered card, what is the meaning of an ace, that, that kind of thing, going over different aspects. And in any case, this function is much the same as the one we've just examined, so I won't go over it in detail. Now let's take a look at draw. This is a really simple function. All we do is fill the surface with a background color. Then we call functions that draw white rectangles on the screen to represent text boxes and finally display the drawing surface. Let's step through the two draw functions, one for each rectangle. Let's look at draw, big window. The first line draws the rectangle, while the second draws the text to the screen. Let's take a look at that. So we're looking at talk dialog, and this is a rather long function. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. It's pretty much plug and play. In the beginning, I test to see whether text is a string or a list. I know that testing for data type in Python isn't considered good form, but it gets the job done. And it's nice to be able to send either a string or a list to this function and have it handle it. Next, we get the height of the tallest line we are going to display, and then use that value to space the text. The result of this function is self-explanatory. Each element of the list is rendered and then blitted to the screen. So now let's take a look at draw user input window. This function is very similar to the above, but of course it has a different location. And since that's pretty much the only difference, I'm just going to leave it. And that's it. We're done. Now let's run the program. So that's everything for this tutorial. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave a comment. I read each and every one. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Good coding.